Hey everyone, Randy Coppola, U.S. Launch Report, Veteran Space Report. Hey, welcome to our coverage of the Starlink SpaceX launch. And we're over here at Cape Canaveral overlooking the launch pads. Reason we're gonna get such a great picture? Take a look at this piece of equipment. This is a custom built tracker, compliments of Ed Geiger, custom builds this equipment and is part of U.S. Launch Report and Veteran Space Report's effort to get you the best coverage possible. It's an incredible piece of equipment just to be near. And when that thing is trained on that rocket, you're gonna get a beautiful launch shot all the way up to separation. But hey, this launch is something else. There's a lot of talk, of course, about what it is, the Starlink launch, but let's think about what is actually SpaceX is doing. They're actually building a uh, worldwide network using the lift capability of SpaceX rockets, something that no other company can do. And in my estimation, it will be far greater than Tesla or SpaceX or the boring company ever dreamed of when this thing is fully done. Now what's in today's payload is 60 of the Starlink uh, satellites. They're about the size of a mini fridge and they weigh about 500 pounds. Now Elon Musk himself says that it's going to take six launches of 60 just to have moderate capability for his system. Ultimately, it's going to have 11,000 satellites covering the KA, KU, and X-band covering the world and will bring in amazing revenue once it's up there. Now, these, each one of the uh, satellites themselves has electrical propulsion once they get up in orbit to position themselves. And they're being stationed at a lower Earth orbit than was originally expected. These were originally thought to go at 741 miles thereabouts. Now they're going to be at 340 miles in their orbit. Now the reason for that is these satellites will not utilize a ground tracking station as most satellites do for internet coverage from outer space. So therefore it's going to be a totally different coverage making it less expensive yet more accessible. So that's just sort of a rundown of what's taking place on, on uh, the Starlink launch. It's really the beginning of a groundbreaking era in internet coverage for the entire world and it's taking place here being the first dedicated payload that SpaceX is launched. Now they did launch two uh, for a test mode with a Spanish satellite to do uh, testing the propulsion system and all the other work that, that needed to be necessary before you launch 60 of them up there and that was all a go. So this is the beginning of the Starlink system. I'm glad you're here to see it with us at US Launch Report. We're so happy to be able to use this kind of capability to bring it to you. Appreciate the donations to make this happen and thank you for your support. Randy Coppola from US Launch Report and Veteran Space Report. Thanks for watching. Stand by for launch coverage. Stage one to start up pressures. T minus 15 seconds. Falcon 9 is configured for flight. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition, lift off. Vehicle is pitching down range. Pitch on the pulse is nominal. Operation securing step section 59 on Elmina. Q, which means that the atmosphere is only, only going to get thinner from here on out. 
Uh, coming up shortly at T plus two minutes and 35 seconds is going to be, or excuse me, T plus two minutes and 32 seconds is going to be Miko. That stands for main engine cutoff. That's when those nine Merlin engines you can see burning on your screen right now will shut off or cut off. Uh, shortly, only a few seconds after that, will be stage separation at 2 minutes and 35 seconds, quickly followed by SES-1. That stands for second engine start one. That's when that uh, single Merlin vacuum engine will ignite after stage separation. All telemetry looks nominal from that first stage right now, and trajectories look good. We see the exhaust AO. gases of those nine Merlin engines uh, expanding as it gets further and further up into the atmosphere. Stand by for Miko in about five seconds. Stage Miko. separation confirmed. You can see it on your screen, and you can hear it through the cheers of the crowd here at SpaceX headquarters uh, that we just had a very a good Miko, we had a good stage separation, and we had a good second engine start. That second stage is now burning brightly on the right-hand side of your screen, accelerating the Starlink stack towards its deployment altitude. On the left-hand side of your screen, you can see the view, uh, a view of the Earth, actually, a beautiful view of the curvature of the Earth and all the lights of the uh, eastern seaboard of the United States. That camera on the left-hand side is attached to the top confirmed. towards the inner stage of the uh, first stage. And on your right, you can see the fairing deploy from that Starlink satellite stack. The crowd here at, headquar at uh, headquarters cheering. I'm sure everyone up in Redmond is happy, too. So at this point in the mission, uh, there are two things happening simultaneously. On the right-hand side of the screen, you can see that's the SpaceX Starlink stack right there, now exposed to the vacuum of space that we've jettisoned that payload fairing from the top of the rocket. Right now you can see a view of the bottom of the second stage. That is the Merlin vacuum engine, uh, currently burning brightly, doing its first of two burns to raise those satellites up to their deployment altitude of 440 kilometers above the Earth. The next step for the second stage is going to be SECO-1. That's going to happen at 8 minutes and 47 seconds. But while that's happening, we'll be watching the first stage also coming back down towards the surface of the Earth. This will be the third time that we have attempted to recover this first stage, this particular first stage. Uh, those of you who have seen previous landing attempts may notice that we are not doing a boost back burn today. Uh, this is because boost back burns are typically used to cancel out the horizontal velocity of a first stage as it goes away from the, uh, the launch pad and then bring it back towards the Cape. For tonight, we're doing a drone ship landing on Of Course I Still Love You, so we just position the drone ship out in the Atlantic Ocean Second and catch it at the end of its trajectory. Problem. No need for a boost back burn here. Without a boost back burn, the next step coming up for the first stage will be the entry burn at T plus 6 minutes and 23 seconds. The entry burn will last for approximately 20 seconds and then shut down. And then after that, we'll be heading... You can hear the team in the background. Uh, this is an incredible moment for SpaceX. You can see those flat-packed Starlink satellites slowly gliding away from the top of the second stage. This is the highest number of satellites, the highest number of satellites that SpaceX has ever deployed in a single time. To thank all of our viewers for tuning in, please follow our website and social media platforms for updates on our next missions and milestones. It's been an honor to host tonight's webcast. Have a good night.